All right, back in the carburetor here. Dig up a few parts here. So, let's see if we can fix this carburetor here and make it not leak. There's a good ball. These are leftover parts from other kits I've done. back in. These are incorrectly, they'll be above the surface, which you can feel, and it'll seal. tube all cleaned up. Put that back in. About that much. Our main jet's good. We got our low speed jet. We have no way of cleaning out our low speed jet circuit, which the, flu the uh, gas gets sucked up through this hole, goes up in the gallery up to here, up into this area, which is all blocked off, and it comes out to transfer slots over here, which we really have no way of fixing these areas, uh, disassembling or dipping it or some kind of other deal. You can see the three holes are in there. A bit of butterfly there. They all look fairly good, but we don't know how they're going to run until we start it up again. So that's what this screw here is for. Controls the idle mixture. Should be a spring on that. There's the spring. Spring keeps it from unscrewing. Cleaned off the tip here, all the muck off of it, so that should make it flow good. Nice even flow rate as you play with it. So you just go down until it lightly bottoms out, right there, and then screw it half, one, one and a half, one and three quarter. Good starting point. That's good. Got our plunger here for our choke. Cleaned up all the stuff on that. That takes a nice long spring there. And you have your retainer nut. Goes like that. It starts on here. It's holding the compressor as I start the thread, makes it a little easier to start. You tighten it down, but don't you know? Don't get too carried away. Doesn't look like the accelerator, the throttle is being held open very far, so. Go down here and open it up a little bit. Make sure there's definitely a, some room to get some air through there. Should be a good start. Okay, here's our little speed jet. Put it back in. Got our gasket over here. Clean it up a little bit. Press it over your low speed jet. So you should be nice and flat if everything's good. Got a little dinky o ring right here. Still good and compressible. So put it back onto our T2 
tube over here. Okay. Goes right here. If it won't stay on there, then that's bad. Good and tight. You're good. Now that pushed against the body of <clears throat> the carburetor right here, down in the hole right there, seals it up. If that leaks, <clears throat> then you have an air leak in your intermediate circuit and it doesn't run very good. So make sure you make that sure that works. Now the float height, you go like that, you see where it sits at. This one here is sitting pretty low. There's a dimension, I don't remember exactly what it is, but this one's about 7 16 which looks pretty, looks like quite a bit to me. If you want to give it a little extra, just give it a little bend like that. And we'll go a little bit further down, get it closer, a little bit closer to 3 a's. Looks good to me. Alright, take care of that part right now. Okay, the main body here. Cellar pump boot is still in there. There's the rod after it got all cleaned up. So it goes back through the boot. It's up in there. Alright, that should be about everything for this. That's pretty well all back together. Yep. Now for the hard part, to deal with accelerator pump. It's always a pain. This is your accelerator pump square. This is a tube with a little slot cut through it, very thin. Don't lay it on a bench like that and push on this thing, you'll, you'll destroy that. So, if you're going to lay it down on something flat, make sure you, this goes like a like two piece of board, or you got something that has a big hole in it so you don't damage this, so it sits on top of that. Don't have it sitting this flat on there. So, I'll have to deal with that. Okay, our ball bearing was a little bit corroded on one of them, if not both. So, got a bunch of junk all over it that I didn't want to clean off. This one's looking pretty decent now. I had a real nice one I had used. This one here is real dark right here. It's got crud on it. So we don't want to use this one. So let's throw it back in the junk parts bin over here. In case we need it later. We back. Alright, we're back. Okay, I got to try and get this to work. So you see the big hole in it. Lay it upside down like that. You can also use a big socket, it doesn't really matter what it is. Need more surface area, so there you go, flip it over. I can work straight up and down now. Okay, we got a little dinky uh, spring right here that we don't want to lose. So that goes in the hole right here. Let me see, where's the ball at? Uh, I forget where the ball goes. Ball's on top or on bottom, I forget. Oh. Can't remember. I think the ball goes on top. See how these things will work. Yeah, ball goes on top. Ball hits against here. Spring in there. This damn hose is going to make me break stuff anyway. Stupid screwdriver is magnetic. Pulling the spring back up out of the hole on me. Okay, here's the clean ball bearing goes in. Boom. Here's the other ball bearing, which is semi clean. Goes right in the other hole. Now we got three O-rings to choose from here. So 
I want the thickest ones to use. So the best way to do that is go measure them with a caliper. Or you can lay them all next to each other and try to determine which one's thicker. Of course they always feel the same. But you want the thickest ones. And if they leak, it's going to make a big mess. That damn phone again. 53, 54. 60, definitely a good one. 57, so this is our thinnest one, we're not using that one. Hello. Alright, we're back again. Alright, which one is the biggest O-ring? Fifty-nine, sixty, fifty-eight. The other one was fifty-three, I think. Quite a difference. Okay, now, which one of these is going to be more important on sealing? I think the one over here is the one that needs to be tightened, the biggest one. So the biggest one is going to go here. So this, which one was the biggest one? I got it mixed up. I think this was the big one, right? Yeah, 60. So we're going to put that one right there. And put the other one next to it. Get our diaphragm. That goes in there like that. Looks like it fits pretty good. spring put it in the middle where it belongs so I gotta flip this thing over keep it kind of compressed as it goes in because the springs trying to pull it back up slip her on in there like that if it's sitting flat you're good I put this in the spring part first and I kind of rotate it in this was the pivot point Go ahead and put a couple screws in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> so, now if you put a bit of water in here or something, or some uh, fuel in here, it might seep slightly through here because we don't have a fifth, our third bolt in here, but it should be fairly sealed up hopefully and won't leak assuming everything's correct but if not having all the hard one there it might not seal 100 percent so either way we can go check it out our accelerator pump goes over here in the diaphragm <clears throat> right there so there's our accelerator pump right there that should make it work and we'll see if it squirts fluid also. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out and see what we got to work with here. And we didn't fix our hose over here yet, so just gonna catch some fuel in here. It's a high flowing pet cock, let me tell you. I like how nothing's coming out. That's always a good sign. So either there's no fuel in, the, in this motor or it's 
got other issues like a tank's plugged up. Can't hear much fluid level. So maybe it's out of gas. What do we see in there? Do we see any fuel in that? Looks pretty dry. At least looking through the camera. I'm guessing that's why it doesn't run too good either. Lack of fuel will make it run bad. here and see if this thing has any fuel in it. Uh, whisper dry. This fucking hose is, gets in the way of everything. Just put all the hardware on the ground. Gets in the way of the foot. Okay. <clears throat> so we got some petcock issues we got to deal with here. So before we check the carburetor, we need to do something about this petcock here. We need to get the hose fixed on here. This. So let me get this off and we'll be back. All right, we're back. So we got some blue Loctite to hold it back up in there. Got the clamp off of here, so I'm gonna cut this hose off so that we can uh, get the bar back in the petcock where it belongs. So I'm just going to take my pocket knife and cut through the hose a little bit. Try to cut through the hose anyway. See how sharp my knife is. Far not very sharp. All right, we got our bar about. Then we're going to put a little Loctite on this and shove it back up in the hole. Up in there, make sure it's good. Put a little, a little Loctite on it. with a hammer. Okay. So all the way up in there. So that should keep it in there good and tight and sealed hopefully. All right, I need a little bit of gas. Go put some fuel in the tank. All right, got some fuel in there. Lifts all the way up now. So now let's see if we're getting leakage out of the uh, halfway tighten up base. Maybe we have fuel now. Amazing how that works. And she's leaking like a sieve over here or there. 
It was dry until it came out where my finger is. Needle and seat. Blow on it, see if it stays clean. Mm -hmm. Stand dry, more or less. Yeah, it's seeping a little bit. I'm going to see if it squirts here a little bit. Not sure which way it's going to squirt. It goes this way, I think. Yeah, that really makes it leak out the bottom when you push on that. Yeah. It needs all the bolts in there. Okay, that's why they put all three screws in there, huh? So we're just dumping it all back up in a can up here. Oh, yeah, blew out the top. <laughs> yeah, it's not supposed to blow out the top when you uh, when you squirt on it. Okay, that failed. This is how it works when you try to do clicky tests, only half assembled parts. Gotta have all the screws in there tight, make them not, not leak. Alright, we'll be back.